Hey everyone, we got some more news for Rivian stock investors today as the company announced another round of job cuts. This one much smaller than the job cuts that were announced in February. So let's dig into the details and let's understand what's going on with Rivian stock. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so Rivian said on Wednesday that it would cut about 1% of its workforce, the second round of job cuts this year, the CEO or the company saying that this was a difficult decision, but it was necessary so that they can achieve their goal of becoming gross profit margin positive by the end of the year, which is what they've told investors that they're trying to do. Now, this goal of being gross profit margin positive by the end of the year was initially thought to come through increasing scale. Right, The more units you produce, the lower your cost per unit because your costs are spread across more units. And so the cost per unit decreases. And so you reach gross profit margin positive. Now, it seems more likely that Rivian's gross profit margin positive goal, if it does hit it by the end of the year, looks like it's going to come through cost cutting and lower production. If it produces fewer vehicles, then it can also achieve uh, if it sells fewer vehicles, I should say, it can also achieve gross profit positive because it loses so much money on each vehicle that it sells, that if it sells fewer vehicles, then its services segment will generate a greater portion of revenue. And the services segment is more profitable than the actual sales of cars are. So the fewer sales, the more the services segment can take a greater percentage of total sales, the more it'll lift gross profit margin positive. Now, this move follows job cuts in February when Rivian cut 10% of their workforce. And this is after they announced lower than expected 2024 production, where they told investors that they were only going to produce 20 or I should say 57,000 vehicles for the year when investors were expecting a lot more than that. If they produce 57,000 vehicles for the year, that would be relatively flat from the prior year. So roughly zero growth. And the stories that are coming out for electric vehicle demand, consumers are choosing internal combustion engine vehicles. More than nine out of 10 consumers prefer internal combustion engine vehicles versus electric vehicles. And Rivian is suffering the brunt of that fall in demand. Remember the company is only viable really at much larger scale. It can't continue at this scale because last year, free cash flow came in at negative 5.9 billion for fiscal year 2023. For fiscal year 2022, negative 6.4 billion. So just in the last two years, the company burned through more than $12 billion just in the last two years. So at its current scale, it's gonna lose multiple billions of dollars and it's going to eventually run out of money because investors are not going to keep pouring money into Rivian if money just keeps leaving out the door with no hope of profitability anytime soon. I could show you this chart here. Rivian stock price is down 62% year to date in 2024. And longer term, the company's retained earnings is negative $18.56 billion. This is how much money Rivian has lost since existence. So investors have given Rivian over $18.5 billion and Rivian has lost all of that money. The enterprise value, the value of the company right now, should someone want to come in and buy it at its current e enterprise value is $3.577 billion. That's what the enterprise is worth today, including the, its cash on hand and subtracting the debt. It's worth five, $3.577 billion. So typically when a company is bought out, you buy it at a premium to its enterprise value. So, okay, let's say even if you paid a 50% premium to the $3.577 billion, Rivian as, an, as a whole, the company, could sell for something like $5 billion or $5.5 billion. Let's say even twice its valuation, its enterprise value is $7 billion. That would still be way below how much money investors put into the company, even if it sells for, even if it can find somebody to buy it at that price, which I don't think it would. I mean, who would pay 
five, six, seven billion dollars for a company that's losing six billion every year with no sight as to when those losses could could decrease or improve. And when the industry is just getting worse, more supply is coming online, price wars are intensifying. Ford just announced that it's cutting, slashing the price of its F-150 electric vehicle by roughly 5,000. That's a direct competitor to Rivian's R1T. So it's getting even worse. How's Rivian going to respond? Are they going to cut their own price again? Or are they going to let Ford have a better price compared to the R1T? And then that's going to give Ford a greater market share compared to the R1T. So it's not a good industry to be in. Rivian's unfortunate enough to be now committed. It can't back out and say, oh, never mind, we don't want to start an electric vehicle company anymore. When it got started, it was in a great position. Everyone and their cousin wanted to invest in electric vehicle companies. The enterprise value soared all the way over $120 billion. Soared over $120 billion. That was during the EV frenzy in 2021. when. All you needed to do is show a picture of an electric vehicle and everybody was throwing money at you and wanting to invest. Nowadays, reality is setting in. Investors are realizing, man, what did we get ourselves into? Running a car company is difficult as it is. It's not very profitable as it is. But now you're adding that element of newness, new technology, new construction, a new supplier base, new logistics, new everything and trying to convince consumers to adopt this new technology that's, oh, by the way, more expensive and less convenient, it's just not in a great position. And understandably, investors are starting to back out and say, okay, let's not throw good money after bad money. Sure, we lost some money investing in this company, but let's not throw more money into it because let's just, let's wash our hands with it. It's what's done is done. So I'm not sure if the company starts, you know, it still has billions of dollars in cash on hand. So it still has billions of dollars. So it's not going to go out of business anytime soon. At least I don't think, unless it decides to close its doors while it still has cash, which very few companies do. But it's not looking good. And these job cuts today, again, following the job cuts earlier, suggest that customer demand is not picking up And it doesn't look like it's going to pick up and it's only getting worse because competition is intensifying. Rivals like Ford and GM and legacy automakers, they were slow to the game. They didn't really come into the market of electric vehicles early on. And now they're coming out with their own supply of electric vehicles. And even if they're not as good as Rivian, the added competition is hurtful. The price cutting, the competition for materials, the competition for labor all of which is hurting Rivian and it doesn't look good. So more, I would say, bad news here for Rivian stock investors. This is not a buying opportunity. I've said this several times. I don't think investors are in a good position here with Rivian. Its prospects do not look good for 2024. Maybe 2025 will be better once we get visibility into the lower cost model and how customer demand is looking like for that lower priced model. Now, I know you're going to say, look at the pre-orders and the thousands of pre-orders. I think we learned our lesson about pre-orders, right? Remember how many hundreds of thousands of pre-orders the EV companies were touting in 2020 and 2021? And then when it came time for these customers to take delivery, they were just canceling their order instead. So you can't go off of pre-orders and feel confident that actual customer demand exists for that product. So let's see when it comes out, the actual sales numbers. And if it improves the situation before we start changing our mind about Rivian and its prospects in the EV industry overall. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.